Hey everybody, Volsker here, and I'm bringing you some recent news that is storming our whacked out society and the nerd world in general. Let's talk about it. Alrighty, so sad but not forgotten story one is about the death of Larry Tesler. For those who don't know, Mr. Tesler or computer scientist Mr. Tesler died at the age of 74 and is most commonly known for being the creator, get this, of the co cut, copy, and paste options in today's computering. Where the fuck would we be without those? Yeah. Who only uses the mouse? Hands up. Exactly what the fuck I thought. Well, Mr. Tesla, rest in peace. You are gone, but not forgotten. So as you're cut from this world and pasted into the afterlife, enjoy. You have put your name on this world alrighty so the C virus is spreading around and companies are getting scared Sony has since pulled out of packs due to concerns or rising concerns of the coronavirus per Kotaku.com Sony's booth was slated to feature major upcoming games like The Last of Us Part 2, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and Doom Eternal. The show was, or which has drawn over 70,000 attendees in the past, takes place in Boston, Massachusetts from February 27th to March 1st. The news comes two weeks after a man living in Boston was found to have the illness after returning home from Wuhan, China, the epic center of the corona virus outbreak we felt that the safest option as the situation is changing daily sony wrote in the post we are disappointed to cancel our participation in this event but the health and safety of our global workforce is our highest concerns shortly provided by update at 152 while we are saddened that sony will no longer have a presence at pax east 2020 we look forward to welcoming our friends at uh, friends at Sony to our future PAX events and focused on making PAX East 2020 successful and enjoyable event for all attendees and exhibitor exhibitors, said Kyle Marsden Kish, the show's event director. So there we have it. There was there's been tons and tons of rumors that this coronavirus is going to impact the nerd and geeky world. It's going to delay the new systems. It's going to delay the release of games. Well, now it's actually getting companies scared to present at these conventions that they have been doing for years um, because they're, they don't want anybody to catch this virus and then spread it. And what sucks about this is anybody who knows Sony and has been following Sony was supposed to release the first playable demo of Last of Us Part 2. Anybody that knows me, Last of Us is my favorite all-time game in history. So I am, I would say, maybe patiently waiting this game. So I was super excited because I want to know, like, the game was delayed a month and I, I want the fucking game. And this sucks. This fucking virus is ruining our chance to see how this game is turning out because we never thought at one point there would ever be a sequel even naughty dog didn't know if there would be a sequel unless it was perfect and it's almost here but breaking news as well um i cannot find the source but i did read actually late last night that sony is not only pulling out of packs but they are also pulling out of the game developer conference potentially so that's going that's pretty massive that's 
two or possibly two huge conventions that Sony is pulling it out of um, for 2020 after now announcing that they are also pulling it out from uh, the E3 2020 convention to making it two years in a row that Sony will not be present. Do they actually have something maybe under their sleeves? Maybe, you know, are they maybe going a different route? Like, because let's be honest, they, they can blow us out of the water. They, they can blow us hard if they do their own convention, which it's not unfeasible. They could do it. Um, they used to do an end of the year Sony conference that, you know, started going downhill, but they, they could do something around E3 or late spring, um, early summer, because you want to announce these systems and you want to go over the details and everything months prior to the release. You know, you don't want to be like, hey, 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 it's September, by the way, in a month and a half, here's a $600 brand new console, not too many games releasing, we'll wait till 2021. Hey guys, no, we need our demonstrations and shit. We want to look at how pretty and beautiful this black box will be for the PS5 and for Microsoft, you know. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Sony pulling out. Alrighty guys, so this is some fucked up news and just shows how jacked up our society is. Uh, for anybody living in Ohio, you might have read this. Anybody not? There was one whacked out fucking murder recently in Cleveland, and all signs point to the Highlander. There can be one. Cleveland, Ohio, the burning body firefighters discovered Wednesday in a secluded field near train tracks in the city's Collinwood neighborhood was missing its head, hands, and feet, according to three law enforcement sources. Soak that in for a minute. What the fuck? Who? Who? What? Cleveland uh, Police Sergeant Jennifer, was it Chisia, uh, would not say what body parts were missing. The dismembered body was burned to such a degree that the investigators cannot identify its gender. Uh, see, she said. Police have not said if they have any suspects or any leads in the case. Investigators and the Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office have not included how the person died. Firefighters made the discovery about 4 a.m. in the grassy area off Larchmont and Clearmont Roads south of St. Clair Avenue, where a small brick path in between homes leads to the tracks Someone's, someone placed shrubs on the top of the body and set it on fire, officials say. A resident in the neighborhood reported the fire and the firefighters alerted the police. Police also searched the area for a stolen phone after the victim of an armed robbery from earlier in the night reported his Find My Phone app. Put his phone near the site where the firefighters discovered the body. Police never recovered the phone. What the fuck? Like, seriously, that is some of the craziest fucking shit that I have heard in years. And that that last part about the stolen phone and it coming there, like, there's that is just way too uh, queen, coincidental. Um, because, yeah, that's, that's fucked up. Well, whoever is involved... Uh, rest in peace, and I hope whoever uh, is responsible for this outlandish and heinous act is brought to justice one way or another. Moving on to the sports world, we're staying in Cleveland. For all of those Browns fans like me, this was um, a slight kick to the dick, but a happy one. So, the god-awful offensive lineman Greg Robinson, according to CBSSports.com, was arrested for alleged possession of 157 pounds of marijuana and could face up to 20 years in prison. 
former Cleveland Browns starting offensive tackle Greg Robinson and free agent wide receiver Quan Bray, who last played for the Indianapolis Colts, were arrested at the Sierra Blanca border checkpoint near United States and the Mexico border this week, according to an official statement from the Department of Justice in the Western District of Texas. Who the fuck needs that goddamn much pot? Like, light it up, guys, but holy shit, that is literally, like, the average weight of a human being. Like, what the fuck do you pack, a, like, a dead body, a pot, and bring it across the border? And you're a fucking starting offensive lineman. You make shit tons of money. Why the fuck do you need to be bringing that across the border? You are a dipshit. But... I didn't want you on the team after how bad you sucked anyway, so here's a good way to get rid of you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, according to federal criminal complaint on Monday evening, the defendants approached the Sierra Blanco checkpoint station where a U.S. Border Control canine unit alerted on their vehicle. A subsequent inspection revealed the presence of approximately 157 pounds of marijuana. Both were charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute marijuana and possession with intent to distribute marijuana. Uh, the 27-year-old Robinson is set to become an unrestricted free agent this offseason after spending the past two horrible, god-awful playing seasons with the Cleveland Browns. According to Tom Palacero of the NFL Network, the Browns had no intention of re-signing Robinson, so the next step is in the NFL is a bit uncertain, or his next step in the NFL is uncertain. Well, I can tell you, as a former number two pick by the St. Louis Rams, I can tell you, you have sucked the last two seasons, and let your career rest in peace. Because now you are facing approximately 20 years in prison. Hats off. And here's that we find a good offensive lineman in the draft this year. Huh. Alrighty, and speeding right along to our wonderful blue hedgehog from the Sega franchise, Sonic the Hedgehog. The movie has recently released as of last week, leading into President's Day weekend. Um, after numerous, numerous um, complaints and concerns over the original design from the trailer from last year, the Blue Hedgehog was recreated frame by frame to look more video game accurate which ended up leading to the massive praise of fans worldwide. But nobody knew how this film was going to be. So, leading into the weekend, it had one of the largest openings for any video game adaptation, and it is currently sitting at a positive 64% at Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and there are a lot of beliefs going into the weekend um, that it is going to continue as number one and continue to gross a decent amount of money, making you know a case for uh, at least some praise and listening to the fans may actually work wonders. Not to mention we do have uh, Jim Carrey, which has been said to be acting a lot like traditional crazy me myself and irene um in living color uh was it liar liar type jim carrey like from what i've heard is it's very very open to like they just told him hey here's your uh role here's your lines freestyle um so i am actually very excited to see this film and i am extremely excited to see that it is doing well not many companies ultimately listen to their fans like this. And I, one, will tell you the original design was god-awful. Let's see how this is. But, hey, props to you guys. You listen, and now you're kicking ass at the theaters. Keep it going. Alrighty, so last but not least, I want <laughs> this is an interesting one. So any film fan um, that watches anything that 
derives from foreign culture such as you know martial arts um even just like books that were uh, written in different languages um there's a very common phrase called whitewashing which basically means taking these other uh foreign ethnicities and replacing them with white people for example one that was very big um was in um Doctor Strange, the master, she was commonly, you know, of Asian descent. They replaced her with a famous white actress. So this is very common in today's day and age. Um, you know, with a lot of the equality fights and battles. So this one is unique. So throwing it back to Pokemon, the anime which is not at all American done. There are claims of whitewashing the new Sword and Shield gym leader, B. A Japanese anime is being claimed or attacked for whitewashing a Japanese character out of a video game. So, as seen here, you can spot that B, she's a pretty typical, like, you know, tomboyish, I'm gonna kick your ass, uh, tanned, um, blonde, dirty blonde hair. And this is what she, you know, her appearance in the video game, Sword and Shield, or video games, depending on which, you know, one you want to do. And here's, you know, live action shot, not just, you know, photograph. Okay. And then moving to the anime... Um, as this article on Kotaku, as Japanese site, as Shima Kiku points out, here is how B appears in the newest episode of Twilight Wings. Okay, so, interesting. So, she's lighter, and her hair is a little lighter blonde. I don't see too much difference, but that's me. So, as noted on Hashima Kiku, there were inten international fans who said that the character had clearly been whitewashed for the anime, writing things like, oh god, they whitewashed me. In Japan, some wondered if the character's skin looked different because of the bright, sunny episode uh, was so lit. And here's what she looked like as it was dimmed down. Okay. It was pointed out that the character's original name is uh, Seitu, a common Japanese last name. As noted, uh, Hashima Kiku, there were claims online in Japan that perhaps the character was simply tanned like a Japanese, uh, was it Gairu? Gairu? And an attempt to explain the discrepancy and chalk it up to a suntan. So. <sighs> An Asian animated uh, animation company whitewashing an Asian character from a video game. I I <laughs> I think that's absurd. I mean, when you're going from a different style of cell shading on a 3D animated models for a video game to um, a more of a you know com mixture of computer hand drawn 2D flat character model anime. I just, I just think there will be, you know, some translation differences, uh, and this is an adaptation in terms of, like, you know, her eyes. Overall color scheme of the character's model is still the same. Mainly, she's just a little lighter tinted in terms of her skin color, and her hair's a little brighter blonde. I mean, the character model to begin with was bl dirty blonde hair and lightly tanned. Let's let that soak in for a minute. Okay. Alright, that's everything I have for you guys. I just wanted to uh, have this, you know, lovely conversation during coffee time. If you enjoy this video, check out the others. You won't regret it. But I just want to thank you again for tuning in and checking me out. 
as always down below you can shoot a thumbs up thumbs down comment let me know what you guys are into lately any comics any video games any absurd topics for future conversations and go ahead and subscribe now so you can go ahead and check out all future videos and past ones in one centralized location as well as at Volsker on Twitter where you'll find me usually providing and dishing out some daily shenanigans. Until next time, guys. Peace, love. Volsker out.